Hello, everyone, and welcome to Photo Finds. I'm your host, Gavin Hatch. I had such a great time bouncing around Disney World this week for these pictures, so let's get straight to it. First, we are going to take a quick trip to the Magic Kingdom to see a special seasonal character offering. Since Easter is just around the corner, you can stop by Bunny Lane Garden, which is in Town Square, to visit Mr. and Mrs. Easter Bunny. The garden that is located next to the park's guest relations is beautiful and full of colorful springtime flowers and a tree that provides great shade. The day I paid a visit to Bunny Lane Garden, Mrs. Easter Bunny was not present. But when you are entering the queue, a cast member is there to hand out an Easter egg-like card that wishes you a happy Easter and on the back has both signatures. I think this is a really cool and uh, rare souvenir. Before leaving the Magic Kingdom, I wanted to get some shots of the additions to the new hub expansion. Recently added were two castle-like towers that you can see behind the tarp that's going to match the look of Cinderella Castle and probably be used for housing lights and audio speakers for the daily entertainment. Now let's go across Seven Seas Lagoon to Disney's Polynesian Village Resort where last week I was able to show you some shots of the construction going on at the lava pool and even some exteriors of the new Bora Bora bungalows. Last week I was able to take a look around inside the new additions to the resort and it is very impressive. They fit in very well, as if they've always been at the resort and provide amazing views of the ferry boats traveling to and from the transportation and ticket center, as well as its neighboring resorts and of course, Cinderella's castle right across the way. As you enter, you are greeted with a colorful Bora Bora poster artwork that ties into the name of the bungalows. There is a long hallway with high wooden ceilings that leads you into the living room and kitchen. I love how the recessed lighting is used throughout the entire place that really makes the woodwork stand out. The living room is very open and lets in beautiful natural sunlight. Unfortunately, the day I was there, it was a bit rainy. Each bungalow sleeps eight, and a single size bed is located under the TV and has really cool artwork of the nighttime water pageant that takes place each evening right outside in the lagoon. The kitchen is a decent size and is equipped with everything from a dishwasher, glasses, utensils, a refrigerator, and more. There is also a very large dining room table that's great for entertaining. After dinner though, you'll want to grab your dessert and sit outside on the private outdoor area to watch Wishes as the kids splash around in the small pool. Now this is considered a pool, but i rather have seen this be a hot tub instead. What do you think? Going back inside, you'll find a split bathroom feature a nicely sized space with a shower and sink, but the toilet is found across the way in a separate room with a second sink. This is a feature that is great for large families that have multiple people needing to get ready at the same time. Not too far away, there is a bedroom that sleeps three, and with a queen size bed that has surfboards as the headboard. But if you look closer, you can see the Seven Seas Surf Company is the branding shown in the center. That is the kind of detail I love about these bungalows and that you will find all throughout. The third person in this room would sleep on a single size pullout that also has artwork, like the one in the living room. But in here, it's of Leo and Stitch sleeping on the beach. Okay, so I saved the best for last. And of course, it has to be the master bedroom. This room is perfect. The king size bed looks extremely comfy and the artwork in the room is just really perfect. You can even spot the orange bird and guests in this room have a private door to the outdoor patio. I think the best feature and everyone's favorite about the master is not the actual bedroom itself, but instead the bathroom. The master bathroom features beautiful dark blue tiles, lots of little frosted windows that bring in natural sunlight, and even a TV in the mirror. Now, if you can't make up your mind whether or not you wanna shower or soak in the tub, they've got you covered. I love the large deep tub and the shower looks just as inviting and relaxing. Even though the bungalows are made to look like they've been around for years, they sure do provide lots of great new features that you don't find in most hotels. The lights can be programmed to turn on and off when coming and going from a room using motion sensors. The living room is equipped with surround sound, and there are even JBL speakers on the outdoor patios that will pump in the soundtrack from the nightly fireworks shows. This past week was my first time to downtown Disney since the holidays, and I was so excited to see all the new changes taking place as this area continues its multi-year transformation into Disney Springs. Coming up to the traffic light near Planet Hollywood is a newly added 190-ton pedestrian walkway bridge. It's scheduled to open later this spring, and when it does, it will be a great help to traffic and guest safety. A second walkway like this one is also being added down the road near Hotel Plaza Boulevard. 
Over on the west side, which will soon be known as Town Center, we see the future location of the recently announced Marvel Superhero Headquarters Store. The new retail experience will be located at what used to be the United World Soccer Store. Of course, the store will feature popular superhero themed merchandise. Currently, if you're looking to buy any Marvel merchandise, you can check out D Street that is right next door. Let's head over to the landings, formerly known as Pleasure Island. This is going to be the first phase of Disney Springs to be completed and will be home to great dining options as well as boutique shops. Most, if not all the stores in the landings appear to be open and have a great variety such as Chapel Hats and next door, the Aaron McKenna's Bakery and Baby Cakes NYC that specializes in gluten-free and vegan baked goods. I loved being able to see the Boathouse, an all-new upscale dining option opening later this spring. Now I'm sure the food is going to be great, but I am more excited for the attraction that will be featured here. Guests will have the opportunity to take a guided Amphicar ride that launches from land, enters the water, and takes guests on a 20-minute tour of the landmarks of Disney Springs. I was able to get these shots from a porthole window in the construction wall. You can see here, this is the ramp that Amphicars will use to drive up and down into the water. Walking over to the marketplace, you can see small details of the new theming and takeover of Disney Springs, such as on this light post. This was my first time in Marketplace for quite some time, and I love the recently added bridge. It provides great views and an even greater shortcut to the other side of the Marketplace. Again, there is great detail all over the area, and I am so excited to see Disney Springs complete in the years to come. Leaving Disney Springs, I went to Hollywood Studios to get some shots of Star Tours, since as of this past week, a new sponsor was announced for the very popular attraction. SMS Audio was announced to be the new sponsor of the attraction, as well as the sponsor of the Avengers Super Heroes Half Marathon Weekend and Star Wars Half Marathon Weekend, both at Disneyland Resort in California. SMS Audio specializes in high quality headphones and speakers. In the comments below, let me know what you think about the new alliance. Well, that does it for this edition of Photo Finds. I hope all of you have a relaxing and safe Easter holiday, and until next time, get out, have fun, and enjoy the parks.